Hey what's going on guys, sorry you don't get to see my plans today, I want to be able to just jump right into the installation process for the back buttons. Before I do start, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a 10% discount code that you can use on the Gaming Cobra website in case anyone is interested on in getting the Rise Remap Kit or any other stuff on the Gaming Cobra website. The code is I'm a caveman or you could also click on the referral link down on the description section below. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install the Rise Remap Kit or back button just like this control I'm gonna show you how to install it on your ps5 controller first I'm gonna unbox the kit so everyone can see what's inside the box first thing you're gonna see is a black soft touch back shell this is all the back buttons pieces the casing the board the buttons paddles and you're gonna see it all come together at the end you got some tools and screws these are all the cables you're gonna need to replace to install it on your kit now i can move on to the installation process and move some stuff away from here the tools that i'm going to be using are some tweezers a prying tool and a reliable screwdriver you just got to choose the appropriate bit this is the bit that i always choose for my screwdriver first thing i'm going to do is take off the decorative strip or front strip however you guys like to call it i'm gonna grab my prying tool i'm just gonna push it in right here at the end you're gonna do the same thing to the other side you can go on the middle push it there once you've done that you can actually just lift up and it should come off easily i'm gonna take off the l1 r1 buttons to do that you can just grab this prying tool as well i usually like to place my thumb right on top of it so that it doesn't fly away and what you want to do is dig right into that gap right here go down on it and then you can just push up same thing to the other side you're gonna see these locks right here at the bottom grab your prying tool and then just push them forward you're gonna see how you're gonna be able to remove the front shell after you take off the screws there's a total of four screws you're gonna find one here another one here under the l1 and r1 buttons you have another set of screws and here's the last one now you're gonna grab your prying tool again you're gonna dig into right right into one of the ends right here you just gotta like push and pull back and forth there's gonna be some locks right around here you just gotta dig right into it and it should come loose then you do the same thing to the other side once it's completely loose you can actually just grab it from one end holding it from the bottom then pull up and it'll come off now you're just gonna grab your battery set it to the side there's gonna be a screw you need to remove which is right here there's a cable right here that you can actually just move to the side you don't necessarily have to disconnect it if you don't want to from the board now you can remove your battery holder and just be careful with all the cables it makes it easier to remove your battery you just gotta grip it right around that edge right here and then just pull back and forth and pull it right out it makes it easier if you pull back and forth there's these two cables on the side left and right you can remove these because you're going to replace them with new ones You have two more cables you need to disconnect. Top one right here with the blue. Make sure to straighten it out. And then this tiny one right here. There's two tiny locks on the left and right side. You can easily see one right here. All you gotta do is push outward. And then with the finger, make sure you're kind of like pushing up so it doesn't lock into it again. And the other one's right here it's kind of dark to see but you just push that one as well then the board is gonna lift up now that your board is free you're gonna grab this cable that has the tape on one side and then the connections on the other side and you actually need it to be facing up this way this part right here it has two holes you're just gonna make sure that you match up the holes to this part right here 
You can push in one side through, then work your way to the next side until it's fully pushed down. And then I just like to make sure it's fully secured by pushing down throughout the whole area. Once you've done that, make sure you move this cable to the side and you can put the board back down. And don't forget you have other cables to watch out for. The one with the blue color is fine, but it's this tiny one that you should remember about. Sometimes it could end up getting stuck under the board. Then make sure this is in place too. So once you got this secured, you can connect this cable back. You can reconnect the blue one as well. You're gonna grab the next cable that has the L1, that has the L1, L2 written on it. Make sure you have it facing this way, exactly like this, because it's gonna go on this side. And I think it's better to start out by making sure you put in the side that connects to the trigger first, which is right here. Once it feels like it's like it's made contact, you can wiggle left to right. They got this little thing right here that can help you push in. Push in so it feels like it's already connected. Now you could connect the other one onto the black one right here. Now you can grab the next cable that's labeled as the R1, R2. For this one, you can flip it around so that the black sides are showing. You're gonna connect this one to the left side, which is right there. This side also has a, the black connection right there. You're gonna connect this one. And just remember guys, you can wiggle left to right to help you out. Now we can put the battery holder back on. Just watch out for these cables, lift them up, move them to the side. You can put back the screw for the battery holder. And let's not forget about this little cable right here. You just gotta place it back on the battery holder. All right, so that's done. We can reconnect the battery. Make sure the cables are on top of the battery and not under it. To manage the battery cables a bit, there's the black thing that sticks out. You can actually just tug them in there to hold it better. Now you're gonna grab this cable right here to connect all your cables and you would actually stick it first onto the battery but I prefer to actually connect the cables because of the flexibility. And I probably forgot to mention to just make sure you lift up this little black part because that's actually the security for when you connect it already. All you gotta do is actually push it back down. 
and it'll secure the cable in. And now I'm gonna stick it onto the battery. I'm not gonna lift up too much since it's already connected, but this is the way that I preferred to do it. So you guys can always just end up sticking it first and then connect the cables. Then you just gotta have it right at the edge of the battery. And just in case some of you were wondering, this connection right here is for the L3R3. I'm not gonna have that because you actually have to solder some of the other cables, which would be this one. Here's another cable. And those two are basically just for you to solder on and then you can program it to your touchpad, L3 or R3. I'm gonna assemble the back shell. The first piece you're gonna need is this one. And this is exactly how it's gonna be facing. You're just gonna place it right on top of the back shell. Like that, you'll feel how it falls into place. It's aligning with the other circles or holes. There's two types of screws provided. There's a bulkier one and then a thinner one. When you're assembling that back piece, you're actually gonna use this one, the bulkier black piece. Make sure you have four of the bigger screws and then just put them all into the four holes right here. Once that's done, grab your back buttons or paddles and the two rods on one button. You got a hole right there. You're just gonna put the rod right through it. And the other one. There's these spots where you're gonna put the rods in and that's gonna hold the buttons in place. You'll hear a click and you can even see if it's not put correctly. Just move it around and push down. And you can see this is K1 and now you put K2. Now we're gonna assemble the cover for your back buttons. You're gonna need this piece, which is for your LED indicator, which is a red little dot. You just gotta place it right through. It has holes in it, which is gonna be placed right here. And you can see it's secured, so that's good. And the next piece is a button so that you could turn on or off your back buttons. Also has holes and a slot to place it in. Now the way that I have my cable set up is the bigger one. I make sure that it's the last one showing and not underneath. This one I think extreme rate shows they have it underneath. I actually like it this way instead. Now that you got your back piece assembled, you can actually just slip that wire through to the hole that's there. Just let it sit there, grab your little board, it should be facing like this. Also unlock that little piece, you can connect your wire. This one actually slides in really easily and then just lock it down. The way you're going to place your board down, there's a slot right here. So you're actually just going to slide that right in into it like this. And then you have these holes right here, this one and this one. Once you slide it in here, you can align those holes together and you'll feel how it's in place. But now you have two screws that you need to put in. And this is where you're going to use the thinner screws, not the bulkier ones. So you got one right here and another one right here. When you're done with that, you can grab your back buttons cover. Gonna start by just placing it at the bottom. You're gonna see those two slots. Just match it up. Then go to the top and just push down. Press on your buttons, make sure they're clicking. Then you can also just hold the button down and it should turn on if everything's connected correctly. So there you go. I'll have it on for now. Now that the back binds are installed, you can actually just push down on your back shell to make sure you're closing it, locking it down. Don't forget about these front ones. You actually just push down and then push these locks forward. Time to put all those screws back. 
Now you can put back your L1 and R1 buttons and just pop those back in. Just make sure you match this part with this right here. Put your strip back on. Push down on the middle too. Then make sure you're pushing down throughout the whole thing to make sure you got it in. The control is fully assembled again. To turn your back buttons on or off, the button right here, you're just gonna hold it for like three or five seconds and a little red light is gonna go on. The light went on. And to reprogram, let's choose the left button and circle. We're gonna press the two together. I'm gonna push the two buttons together now and then just watch for the red light there you go it blinked so that means this left button is now circle and now i'm going to choose x and the right paddle i'm going to hold them down together and then the red light is also going to blink and that's it your back buttons are ready to use this one is programmed to x this one circle and then it has a nice clicky sound to it if you like that oh but also make sure that you shut it off so just hold that button down that light goes off and you're ready to go all right guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully i helped some of you guys out and my next installation is actually gonna be the led kit and i actually have like two new kits that i'm going to install on this controller so this controller is actually gonna have more stuff than this one which is my ultimate ps5 controller at the moment also has back buttons and clicky hair triggers thank you guys for the support thank you for watching and i'll be back with another one